Welcome to CIMB's Investment Insights, the podcast series by CIMB that brings you our views on the latest market developments and how to benefit from them. I'm Andrew Lee, Head of Investment Advisory and Strategy from CIMB's Chief Investment Office. Today's topic is on the first quarter 2024 outlook, which we think holds greater clarity and optimism. This year will be different from 2023. Initially, markets will seem very similar to last year, but a few things have changed, and these changes will assert themselves onto markets. So what's changed? Firstly, there is greater clarity in policy. The Fed has stopped raising rates, has guided for rate cuts later this year, because the US economy is going to slow, and inflation is much closer to the Fed's target. There is also policy clarity in China, where the central government will do more to support and stimulate the economy. So the tremendous pessimism we saw last year is past its peak. China's recovery may still slow, but 4.5% growth for this year is still three times faster than projected US growth. Secondly, dollar strength is over. Dollar could rebound periodically if the US economy looks strong, but we would diversify out of the US dollar on any strength. Thirdly, we expect optimism in Asian assets to grow as 2024 progresses, including in ASEAN, where economic fundamentals and government fiscal spending are poised to rise. Potential negatives are a severe slowdown in the US and election, su- and election surprises from the many general elections this year. Our asset allocation is 50% to bonds, 45% to equities, and 5% cash. We like bonds because eventually there will be some rate cuts as the US economy slows. Corporate bond yields are still attractive and stay in investment grade as well as move to longer duration bonds. In equities, we like ASEAN markets, Singapore and Malaysia, but think US is slightly expensive given the valuations and phase of the cycle it is in. We would hold some 5% in cash because we have not seen an end to the negative political shocks and the yields on currency deposits are quite attractive. On to the US. The positive message from the Fed is obvious from the equity and bond indices performance late last year. Interest rates are unlikely to be higher and should be lower sometime this year. The hope for the US economy therefore is that lower bond yields reduce borrowing costs, re-rate valuations, and create a wealth effect so that the deceleration in economic growth is mild. The danger and warning from the Fed is that the US economy is expected to slow from 2.6 to 1.4%. If the slowdown is more severe, then S&P 500 earnings and growth could be revised down to. There are a number of unknowns The first is whether oil will remain low, meaning below $90 to $95 this year. If it doesn't, then inflation and rate cut expectations will change. The second is whether Trump will be in the White House by this time next year. The betting markets now imply he is the most likely to win with 44% probability versus Biden at about 33% probability. This year, we'll also see economies with some of the largest populations hold elections. Other than the US, the EU parliament will hold elections, and so will India, Japan, Indonesia, Mexico, and very likely the UK. On China, it remains fashionable to be pessimistic over China, yet despite all the disappointing data from China last year, We think peak pessimism over China is behind us. That's because in November, the central government indicated it was willing to borrow to stimulate the economy, which it did, and pushed government deficit to about 3.8% of GDP. That is likely to be repeated, so that the deficit level will again be close to 4% of GDP this year, which means more borrowings and stimulus from the government. But the real immediate problem with China is that households and companies lack confidence to spend, and that 
is impacting growth. And confidence, once lost, is quite difficult to restore. On US-China strategic rivalry, it is unlikely to heal because China's support for Russia in the Ukraine war and because of fear of a Chinese invasion over Taiwan. On currencies, CIMB economists are forecasting the ringgit to end the year at 438 to the US dollar, against the Sing dollar, 334, against the Aussie dollar, 302, and against the sterling, 574. Thank you for listening to Investment Insights, a podcast series by CIMB.